Yeah. The dog's barking. Yeah. That can only mean one thing. Yeah. The mail's here. Yeah, we got yeah. another Reddit mailbag uh. episode. And just a reminder why you enjoy. This is not advice. I'm not your advisor. We're back with another Reddit mailbag episode. And this time, we're getting our protein in. That's right. We'll save the beers for later. Happy St. Patrick's Day. My last employer-sponsored 401k was automatically rolled over into an IRA. What does this mean? I had a 401k plan from a previous employer that I left in 2017. I received a notice that my plan would be automatically rolled over in February to an IRA if I didn't respond. Didn't open the notice until today. What does that mean for taxes? Is there any way for you to move the money? Or has that ship sailed? What are your options now? Uh, pretty unusual that they would uh, that they would roll it over for you automatically, but it shouldn't be a bad thing. Not a taxable event to roll money from a 401k into an IRA, and I can't imagine that they would do anything that would be a taxable event, like roll it into a Roth IRA. It probably means that it's in cash, although for them to automatically roll it over, I mean, is it at Vanguard? Is it a, an account that stayed with the same custodian, the same brokerage firm? If it did, it might still have the same holdings that you had. That would be the first thing that I would go check. Is it all in cash? Um, because you may not want it to be. You should be able to roll it over into your current 401k. I can't see any reason you wouldn't be able to do that. Most 401k plans accept, uh, accept rollover contributions, and you can send money from a 401k to an IRA and back basically as much as the plans will allow. So that should all work. Depending on whether your new 401k is a good plan, and there's lots of resources you can use on this subreddit to see if it's good, meaning do you have good options, are they relatively low cost. If you don't have that, you may just want to leave it in the IRA and learn how to invest it yourself, but otherwise you should be all good. No big deal. Doesn't mean anything for taxes. Selling quote unquote given property tax question. I have a property that has been handed down from my grandfather to my mother, to me, all transfer deeds came prior to the deaths and without any exchange of money. What taxes will I have to pay if sold, capital gains slash gift, plus any emotional advice? Um, no emotional advice. I'll leave you on your own for that. But if they were gifted, if they were really all gifted before death, then the cost basis would never have been stepped up. So the cost basis, if the series of facts that you said were true, is whatever your grandfather's cost basis is, plus maybe you can add back in any improvements to the property, but I sort of doubt you have uh, good records of those. So yeah, there, there won't be any gift taxes. Those would have been handled by your grandfather or your mother's estate uh, when they were making them. Those aren't, those aren't on you, but there's probably a lot of capital gains if you sell it. And if it was a property that was ever rented and was depreciated, there might be some depreciation recapture, which is sort of like capital gains, but perhaps at a higher rate. So yeah, you, you need to track down the cost basis on that. It might be, it might be tricky, you know, to see if there's anyone that, that knows anything about it, but you should be able to look it up uh, when, when it was sold, what, what was the price? And so a lot of it might be capital gains. You might have to send uh, 15 or 20% of whatever you sell it for to the feds. Just getting started with a Roth IRA, is it better to contribute towards 2018 while I, till, while I still can? I have $5,000 to deposit into a Roth IRA. Does it make a difference if I place that into 2018, split it, or put it all in 2019? I don't plan on investing any more into this account for the remainder of the year. Uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely put it toward 2018. Uh, even if you're not going to make a 2019 contribution up until the April 2020 deadline, you won't have lost anything. And this way you're getting kind of a free option. So I, I would definitely make the contribution toward 2018 if I were you. It's exhausting staying vigilant to not get constantly ripped off. Well, the reason I clicked this, and not really a question, more of a statement, and then, you know, does anyone else feel like this? Actually, the article I uh, posted on Monday was protect yourself at all times. It, it is exhausting and it's something that you've got to do. Everyone is responsible to make sure that they're protecting themselves. And yeah, there's some times where it's clearly pretty bad and, you know, it shouldn't be that way, but it's good that you're thinking about it. 26 years old, 
considering buying a house where I live, even though I'll be moving across the country next year. All right, this is going to be a bad idea, but let's read what you got. Currently, you work at a large energy company. You're making 42 k You're still in school and be graduating. You've been offered to stay on permanently. You'll get a 10 k raise plus benefits. You're saving about 55%. Okay, so you're saving a lot. Been saving up. That's good. Your rent is three seventy five. You have some student loan debt. Okay, you're paying that down. You're currently in the South, and you're planning to move back to New York. You've secured an offer of employment to begin August twenty twenty. I'm a little confused. Is this the same offer? Okay. Well, a position that will include a bonus and reimbursement. See, okay, you're gonna be a CPA, no relocation costs, your estimated cost of living in New York will not nearly be the same. Yep, I agree. Your mom lives where you are and has no plans to move to New York. She rents an apartment. You're currently living, okay. Is your mom gonna live in this house? Is this where this is going? You live in your school, okay. I don't see how any of this is. I'm considering buying a house in a neighborhood that is currently undergoing a major uptick in value. What does that mean? It, has it already done that? Are you, do you have a crystal ball? I'm working with a lender. It sounds like you're being sold something. You'd be able to secure a mortgage that would put you at almost the exact cost of your rent. Not including property taxes, maintenance, etc. Why? Well, okay. You should probably include property taxes, maintenance, etc. You've been told over and over and over that property is the best investment you can make. Well, that's wrong. I mean, that's just like obviously wrong. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe it will be, but what well, you can you can Google uh, you can Google that. That's a that's an argument that may be true for some people and may be true in some places for some times, but it's not obvious that investment in property is the best investment anyone can make. You're not sure if it would make sense to own a home here while living in New York. I'm not the type to be a landlord, but your mom said she'd be happy to live in the house and pay the mortgage. You'd rather make money on the mortgage. Okay, so your mom said she would move in and pay the amount of the mortgage. You think you could charge higher than you'd charge your mom. I would like to purchase a home in New York, but I'm not sure if this will negatively affect my chances to secure a second mortgage. Is it a smart investment to purchase a home that I will not be living in? I mean, it depends. It depends. It's not... No one's going to know if it's going to work out or not. Obviously, if the house goes up in value, then it's going to be a, a great investment. But really, the only situation that you're talking about doing it in is one where your mom lives there and is paying you under market rent. And you're just going to pick up a bunch of expenses. And sure, I mean, if you put it in a spreadsheet and project the thing going up by like 5 10% a year, it's going to look great because you're going to be borrowing against it. But it uh, probably will make it harder to get another loan unless the value of the thing goes way, way up. And what are you going to do if you want to sell it? Are you going to evict your mom? Uh, what are you going to do if you don't have her live in it? Are you going to hire somebody to run it for you? Have you looked at how expensive that is? Um, this seems totally crazy. You, I think you'd be out of your mind to do this, but it might still work out. I'm not saying that it's not going to work out. I think it's just going to uh, drive you nuts and potentially be a negative uh, or you know, break even and then a bunch of stress for nothing. So I wouldn't do it, but it's up to you. Looking to buy in high cost of living area, parentheses, San Francisco. How much can I really afford and how much can I stretch? I don't, I don't understand the difference between the two, but okay. I know I'm going to get folks telling me to leave San Francisco. I won't. I'm, I'm in the Bay. And I'm happy here, despite the high cost of living. Me too. Appreciate that. Yep, okay. I won't tell you that. Uh, you're currently renting. 2000 a month. You have roommates? Uh, I think I'm at a stable enough point to look to buy. Plan to live in the Bay Area for four to five years at least. I'm trying to gauge how far I should stretch believe the market will continue to increase in San Francisco. It's a reasonable outlook. Your longtime girlfriend will be living with you and paying you $2,000 a month in rent. Okay. 
you're 35, you make about 185 equity. You, you're telling me you get shares. I get 250 a million dollar total vesting. Okay, so you are you're getting shares. I got it. So you're making something like 400 in a good year. 401k Roth. Okay, now we're at balances. Uh, you got two hundred thousand dollars in there. You got a million dollars of investments and eighty k of savings. Um, okay, first, I'm going to stop and say most of this subreddit's advice specialty applies to people with way less than a million dollars in assets. So you should probably discount everything that you hear here a lot. So with that said, how much can I really afford, and how much should I stretch? Hoping there are folks here who can provide some insight. I think there's a couple questions. I mean, it depends. What are the other investments? Uh, what are the ramifications of doing that? Are you going to be happier in a place that you own? Or are you really happy where you are right now? And this is purely you think it'll be a better financial move. If you can access the million dollars of other investments, you know, assuming those are taxable and liquid and not at a big gain, then you, know, you could plan to use a chunk of that for a down payment. 400k 185 as salary I mean you could you could look at a pretty expensive place is it necessarily going to be a good investment you know is it gonna make more sense if you you buy it and then you got to sell it in four years I mean if you are planning on leaving in four to five years it might not be such a bad idea to rent I think the big mistake a lot of people make when they're trying to compare these things is Right now, you're paying 2K a month. Probably you're in a place that's 4K uh, with your girlfriend. And what you need to compare that to is a place where you would be equally happy buying it and figure out what the cost of that would be. And my guess, just knowing the market a little bit around here, is that that expense is going to be higher if you go to buy. Uh, my, my guess is that you're getting a better deal renting for the 2000 or 4000 a month, whatever it is. You're getting a better place than you would be able to get where you're paying $4,000 a month in interest, for instance. So $4,000 a month in interest would be uh, something like if you had a uh, million, maybe slightly more, but a million dollar mortgage. That's the first place you look. Of course, there are many, many other considerations here, right? There's the cost of the value of whatever you're putting towards the down payment. There's also the fact that the house might appreciate, it might depreciate. Uh, you're going to have to pay transaction costs to get in and out. You're going to have to pay taxes to get out of some of your other investments. Um, but just as a starting point, you know, if you're looking at buying a two or two and a half million dollar place, you could probably get qualified for it. Now, you probably won't go broke doing it, but you're going to be consuming a lot more housing at that point. You're going to be in a more expensive place, and you're going to be paying more for it. Um, so, if you really want to move, you know, if there's if you would value being in a place you owned, then you should take a look at okay, what's the kind of place I would want to be, and how much is that actually going to cost me? And I would start with how much interest you're going to pay. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's a, you know, a, a bad deal if you're paying more interest. It just means you're upgrading your house. Convincing my employer, an early stage startup, to set up a 401k. Currently, have no 401k, and you would like one. They offer 401k. What you can tell from the fees page, the cost of the employer would be 350 per year. Okay. Um, I think it's reasonable for you to ask for it. I've seen a lot of these plans and most cases when there's a really low cost to the employer, that means that the employees are probably paying for it somehow themselves, either literally straight through account fees or it's getting subsidized by funds that have high expense ratios on the other side. And so usually for a really good plan, a really bare bones plan, that would fit your needs um, from what it sounds like, I would expect the cost to be something like 
2500 to $5,000 a year. Uh, maybe you could find one that's a little cheaper, but there are a lot of administrative costs. They've got a, uh, they're covered by ERISA, so 401k plans have to have an administrator. They have to have uh, somebody be the trustee. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not quite so simple. And it's the reason why most companies uh, don't have them when they're very small. But a reasonable thing for you to want, uh, I just think uh, you should understand, go figure out what fees are, would be charged to the employees in this and whether you would want that. You know, if you are paying a couple hundred bucks a month uh, or a couple hundred bucks a year and you've got 18K in there, is that trade-off worth it? Uh, is that worth the tax deferral? And it might still be. It certainly might still be. But the Slavic 401k might not be the, the best option. Thanks for tuning into this mailbag episode. Be sure to tune in to another one next Wednesday.